a dreamy, enchanting stay in Disney World with a ton of tapas, or a walkathon bus mandated nightmare. We're going to tell you all about one of the most misleading Disney resorts today here on DFV Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. If you've been following along with our Is This Hotel Worth It series, then you know how much theming and restaurants and transportation and price ranges can influence whether you're gonna bite that hotel reservation bullet or not. So today I'm throwing another hotel into the mix. Welcome to Disney's Coronado Springs, a moderate resort with unique Mexican-inspired influences that are just as classy as they are cozy. But bonus, we'll also be talking about Coronado Springs' most recent addition, that new massive 15-story structure Grand Destino Tower. And with that addition is where the misleading part of this hotel comes into play, but we're gonna get into that later. For now, here's a super brief intro to Coronado Springs. It's a moderate resort. What does that mean? Well, moderate resorts are basically Disney World's middle tier hotels. They're not the most expensive, they're not the most affordable. They also have more amenities than value value resorts do, which are the least expensive hotels, but not nearly as many amenities as deluxe hotels have. So this whole point of it being a moderate resort, that's really, really important when it comes down to is this worth it or not. Besides the thousands of guest rooms, Coronado Springs also has a convention center with ballrooms, a full service business center, and boardrooms because some of us just can't escape the old grind even in Disney World. All right, got all that? Let's really dive in. Let's talk about atmosphere of Coronado Springs here. So you've got a dreamy kind of romantic hotel that's not Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa, and it definitely is not as expensive. So Coronado Springs is spread out along the serene Lago Dorado with immersive landscaping like Southwestern American styled mosaic decor and lots and lots of cacti. Coronado Springs is gonna make you go, wow, everything's quiet too quiet. This can't possibly be part of the Disney World bubble. And I get that. If you stay at a place like, I don't know, Disney's Contemporary Resort with a monorail gliding through and Chef Mickey twirling napkins at his dance party, Coronado Springs might feel more like a library in comparison. But, you know, a library with pools and restaurants and like no books. Okay, forget that comparison. It's just a quiet and chill hotel, okay? And this hotel could be a really great option for a newlywed couple looking for a place to honeymoon since the price won't break you, but the vibes will still make you feel like you're on a relaxing, beautiful vacation. But if you think Coronado Springs is swanky enough as it is, is just wait until you step inside Grand Destino Tower. Now, this makes this hotel. I'm not gonna lie, and I'm gonna talk about this a lot through this video, probably. Grand Destino Tower was added to Coronado Springs in 2019, which is why it feels sleeker and more modern than the rest of the hotel. Here, Salvador Dali's artistic stylings take center stage as the main source of inspiration for the tower's design work. Fun fact, you probably already know this, Dali and Walt Disney collaborated a long time ago on a long lost animated short together, and the project was called Destino. Now, if you're a Disney history buff, then you're going to appreciate the photos of Walt and Salvador Dali in the tower's Dahlia Lounge. And that won't be the last you'll hear about Dahlia Lounge in this video. It is awesome, and we're going to talk about it a little bit later. Beyond the Spanish inspiration, the tower is decorated with large archways, pillars, there's a multi-story lobby, there's eye-catching patterns, bright mosaic murals. These all come together to create a really upscale and artsy feeling that would make both Dolly and Disney very proud. But Will staying at this hotel be as pricey as purchasing an original Salvador Dali painting? No, absolutely not. But the room price tags might still shock you. So what does moderately priced really mean in Disney World? Honestly, you're probably still gonna consider moderate prices to be high compared to other standard hotels outside the Disney bubble. And by high, I mean a Holiday Inn is gonna look pretty nice once Disney shows you your whopping grand total. There are lots of different rooms at Coronado Springs. You've got your standard rooms, your suites, your club level rooms. And that's another bonus. Coronado Springs is the only moderately priced hotel that does have concierge and club level rooms. We'll talk about that later as well. The rooms at Coronado Springs are split up into villages. You've got the Casitas, the Ranchos, the Cabanas. These are situated on the perimeter of the lake. And then of course you have the tower. Now the Casitas and Cabanas are the closest of the three to El Centro or the main area of the hotel where most restaurants and shops and amenities can be found. Your window view options are either the standard view, which will be like a parking lot view or a view of one of the other buildings, or you can have a water view. These standard rooms include two queens and can sleep up to four adults. 
But what's the cost here? You're going to plan to pay around $300 to $340 per night. Like I said before, not the worst Disney prices, but definitely not cheap. Now, if you opt for the water view, tack on another $30 more per night. You also have the option to choose a standard room with a king bed, which will sleep up to two. Standard views or water views are still your only options here, but prices will be more costly for that bigger bed option, ranging between $375 and $425 per night. Like I mentioned earlier, Coronado Springs is really spread out, so you might find yourself getting your daily steps in without having to step foot inside a Disney park. But if you'd rather spare your feet the extra steps, you have the option to choose a preferred room, which will keep you closer to the main hub of the resort. You can also choose to stay in the tower specifically, which is also probably gonna save you a lot of walking because the tower is connected to all the restaurants and shops in the hotel. Now let's go back to preferred rooms. These rooms have views of either the lake, the parking lot, or a building courtyard. You can choose a room with two queen beds that'll sleep up to four adults, or you can opt for that king bed room. The preferred rooms cost around $400 to $450, but the added cost just might be worth it if the sheer size of Coronado Springs feels intimidating to you. If you're not prepared to stay way out in the ranchos section, then that is definitely gonna be a shock to your system. So Disney's definitely selling convenience with these rooms. The casita section of the hotel has some fancier options if you're wanting to one-up your romantic Disney getaway. Plus, they'll give you a little more space. The one-bedroom suite can sleep up to six adults with two queen beds and a queen-size sleeper sofa. Now, if you don't need all the beds, there's a king bed option available as well. Not only will you have a few more amenities here, like a living room area and dining area, but you'll also be in a prime location close to El Centro. In one of these rooms, you might have views of the courtyard, garden, or lake. No parking lot this time, but you're going to have to pay quite a bit more for that space, convenience, and views. These suites cost around $1,100 per night, and they tend to be a little pricier if you go for that king bed option. Now, feeling really classy, the casita section also has an executive suite option that can sleep up to eight guests. These suites have one king bed, two queens, and one queen sleeper sofa, and just like the one bedroom suite, you'll also be near El Centro. There are two bedrooms, multiple bathrooms, a kitchen area, dining area, and living area, so you don't have to worry about breathing someone else is air in here. And these are great if you like to have more space and do more at your hotel than just sleep. The executive suite price definitely reflects those extra amenities and space though. Expect to pay around $1,600 per night. Now, if you're wondering why they've got all these executive suites and suite types of rooms, it's because Coronado Springs does have that giant convention center attached to it. So there's often a lot of business folk staying here. Now, I've got a fun question for you. Would you rather stay in a cozy ranch feeling room or a sleek and modern style room with an incredible view? If the second part of the question is more attractive to you, then listen up. It's time to talk about Grandestino Tower. Like I said, elect to stay in the tower for sure and guarantee yourself a tower room. You have the option of either a standard view or a view of the sprawling Lago Dorado. As expected, those lake views will be a little more cha-ching. Tower rooms have two queen beds that can sleep up to four or the ever reliable king bed option that costs a little more. These go for around $400 to $450 per night. Rooms in Grand Destino Tower are great options if you're looking to get the most space for your budget. Out of all of Disney World's moderate resorts, these standard rooms are the largest. And like I alluded to before, another cool perk about Coronado Springs is that it is the only moderate resort to have club level or concierge service. This also makes it the cheapest club level option in all of Disney World. See how this is misleading? If you're not careful, you might find yourself mistaking this place for one of Disney's deluxe resorts. Not familiar with Disney's club level offerings? Well, staying in a room that has club level access means you get to experience lots more amenities like personalized concierge service and entry to the resort's Kronos Club. The the Kronos Club is an exclusive relaxing space that serves refreshments for breakfast, snacks, drinks, and desserts all throughout the day. Another perk that comes along with staying at the club level of Grand Destino Tower are the views you can score of the Epcot and Disney's Hollywood Studios fireworks, which you can see from the Kronos Club. But describing the rooms themselves here in the tower, your standard view room has two queen beds sleeping up to four adults. These cost between $650 and $750 per night. As you're making your way up the luxury ladder, you'll come across the deluxe suite option, which has a living room area, very spacious bathroom, and sleeping accommodations for up to four, including one king bed and one queen sleeper sofa. 
The deluxe suite's gonna cost you about $900 to $1,000 per night. Now the one bedroom suite is similarly spacious, but with even more wiggle room. There's plenty of space for storage, multiple bathrooms, and seating to just chill out and breathe for a second, which can be hard to remember to do when you're running ragged around the Disney parks. Here, you've also got one king bed and one queen sleeper sofa for four people. This suite costs between $1,200 and $1,400 per night. For the bougiest of bougie stays, there's the presidential suite. This room has one king bed and two queen beds, sleeping up to six adults. It's also incredibly spacious and has sprawling views of the surrounding Coronado Springs area. There's an entire dining table, living area centered around a TV, a kitchen island with seating, and just space. Tons and tons of space. But how much will it cost you to live the presidential life here at Coronado? Between $2,300 and $2,600 per night. So being alongside a lakeside oasis might make you feel like you're somewhere tropical and dreamy, far away from Central Florida, but don't be fooled, you're still in the middle of good old Disney World. Coronado Springs is an Animal Kingdom area resort, meaning you're not too terribly far away from that park. And from some of the higher floors in Grand Destino Tower, you can actually see the peak of Expedition Everest. I uh, think we should warn people on the coaster what's waiting for them on the peak of that mountain. Yeah, you're right. Best they find out for themselves. This location is also not too far from Hollywood Studios and Epcot, which reminds me you've also got views of Tower of Terror, depending on your room. Now, should we warn those people? Mm, nah. The one park Coronado Springs is farthest from is Magic Kingdom and can take 15 to 20 minutes travel time depending on traffic to get there. But keep in mind, that's when you're finally on the Magic Kingdom bus. That doesn't also figure in the amount of time it takes to wait for that bus to pick you up. We'll talk more about transportation here in a second, but spoiler alert, that can be one of the major downsides of staying at Coronado. Now, the overall serenity of this hotel makes it feel very secluded. The peacefulness of the lake drowns out the screams of people racing away from Expedition Everest Disco Yeti or who are being pulled down into the fifth dimension of Tower of Terror. But the sheer size of the resort makes it feel like its own little world, which might be good or bad, depending on what you want to get out of your stay. If you want some peace and quiet on a nice relaxing getaway, Coronado Springs can provide that. But if you feel like you don't have great proximity to the theme parks, you might get a little frustrated by the sheer size and isolated feel of this one. All right, now it's time to talk about everybody's favorite. Drum roll, please. Disney transportation. Okay, it's my son's favorite topic, at least. Disney's complimentary transportation can be great simply because it's one of the few things you don't have to pay extra for on property. However, it can also be a real thorn in your side, especially when it comes to those buses. If you're not the biggest fan of Disney buses, then I've got some disappointing news for you. Buses are the only form of transportation available at Coronado Springs. Yep, if you're going to a theme park, you gotta catch the bus. Going to Disney Springs? catch the bus. Not only that, but because the resort is so spread out, there are also multiple bus stops that loop around that resort. And the bus makes stops at Grandestino Tower, Casitas, Ranchos, and Cabanas when picking guests up to head into the parks. And they drop them off at those stops after leaving the parks. This can easily add on an extra 10 to 20 minutes to your commute. And if a bus fills up at the stops before getting to yours, well, then you don't even get to get on that bus. This might throw a wrench in your plans, especially if you're rushing to make a reservation or arrive to a park at opening. Fortunately, the My Disney Experience app can help you see what time each shuttle will arrive so you can have a better idea of when you and your family need to be ready to roll at the bus stop. But let's stop trying to leave the resort for a second here because you're going to want to know all the food offerings and trust me, you've got a plethora you're going to want to know about. So here's another way Disney's Coronado Springs deceives guests with its moderate resort title. It's got a lot more food options than any other moderate hotel on property. And we're not complaining, the more the merrier. So where are we gonna eat first? Well, Cafe Rick's is your grab and go spot for any pastries, snacks, or desserts. Nothing particularly special here. It more so appeals for convenience. Just wanted to get that one out of the way before we dive into the good stuff. Nearby is Rick's Sports Bar and Grill, which is a solid sports bar option that serves pub style food like cheeseburgers and wachos, which is basically nachos, but made with waffle fries instead of chips. It also has a bunch of TVs so you can watch the latest sports games while chowing down. El Mercado de Coronado is the main quick service restaurant at Coronado Springs. It serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner and has a wide range of options on the menu like breakfast sandwiches, Mickey waffles, flatbreads, pasta, and Spanish influenced dishes like roasted mojo pork loin and ancho rubbed chicken breast. There are also sweet treats on the menu as well as some more grab and go options. Next up is Three Bridges Bar and Grill at Villa del Lago, and it's all about the atmosphere here. This is an open-air restaurant that sits right over the Lago Dorado. It is covered, though, but it is pretty out in the open. 
The menu has some really indulgent choices, like destination-worthy stuff like the warm manchango and Oaxaca cheese dip, Szechuan peppercorn wings, and braised pork tacos. Pretty unique options, but not just unique. They're good, like really, really good. And if you're a big sangria fan, make sure to try one of the Three Bridges house-made sangrias, or if you can't make up your mind, order the Flight of Four. It is definitely worth it and definitely photogenic. Now we've got a little extra to talk about with those sangrias in just a second when we get to the activities section of this video. But for now, let's talk about another table service option, Maya Grill. The menu includes eats like fish, tacos, empanadas, fajita skillets, and other chef's specialties. And this is another decent spot to sip on some handcrafted cocktails because these are basically the exact same cocktails you're gonna get at places like La Cava del Tequila and the restaurants in Epcot's Mexico Pavilion because the same company owns and runs Maya Grill and creates their bar menu. But heads up, Maya Grill has never really hit the spot for us. It's definitely not destination worthy in the same way the Three Bridges is. And it's good if you happen to be stuck at Coronado, but it's not someplace that I'd probably make a reservation and drive out to. However, if you want some good churros, the fried baby churros served on the Maya Grill dessert menu are in a skillet and topped with dulce de leche ice cream and caramel sauce, which is pretty good. Now, at the top floor of Grandestino Tower is Toledo, tapas, steak, and seafood. Here you're gonna find tapas, steak, and seafood. Toledo really dials into Spanish cuisine with staples like chorizo, marinated olives, and artisanal charcuterie and cheeses. This is a really interesting restaurant because it doesn't have signature pricing really, but it feels like a signature restaurant because you're up at the very top of that tower. You're gonna have great views of fireworks. So it kind of feels like a budget California grill in that way. <laughs> Anyway, you can also try out the chef's signature dinner for two. It's a little bit pricey, but you're gonna get to try multiple courses of classic Spanish dishes. Near Toledo, you're gonna find that beautiful Dahlia Lounge, which has more tapas and an array of cocktails and wine. There's an outdoor seating area with great views of theme park fireworks, and you can take the elevator down a few floors to find Barcelona Lounge in the lobby of Grandestino Tower. Come to admire the brightly colored mosaic and impressive decor, and stay to enjoy the specialty coffee, artisanal cocktails, and small bites. Speaking of cocktails, Laguna Bar is situated along the water and sits pretty close to El Centro. It's a convenient location for grabbing a snack like the those watchos I mentioned earlier, because Coronado Springs loves their watchos, or a cotton candy cheesecake or a signature tequila cocktail. Need a drink for when you're laying back poolside? A Siesta's Cantina is for you. It's got cocktails, both frozen and on the rocks, appetizers, salads, and burgers, and it's close to the main pool. This was one of my first favorite restaurants in Disney World because I used to stay at Coronado Springs all the time, and I loved going to siestas and getting a margarita and laying in a hammock and just relaxing. We will definitely talk about the Coronado Springs pools in just a second, but the food options at Coronado are really generous considering this is a moderate resort. I mean, think about it. Disney's Port Orleans French Quarter doesn't even have a main table service restaurant and has to travel to its Riverside sibling to even sit down to eat. So having so many options within walking distance of your room is a really nice plus for Coronado Springs. Now, you want fancy curated cheese boards? You got it. You want waffle fries covered in cheesy goodness? You got it. You want Mickey waffles? Got it. You want a solid marg? You've got it. But what if you want something other than food? Yep, we got that too. Maybe you're not hitting up a park every day of your trip. That's okay, Coronado Springs has a lot of different activities to keep yourself and the kids entertained. Contrary to popular belief, exercise on vacation isn't taboo, and Coronado Springs has two fitness centers, La Vida Health Club and an additional fitness center in Grandestino Tower. These facilities are stocked with cardio equipment, weights, and all the other elliptical equipment you need to get swole. One thing I didn't love is that they didn't have a Smith machine in the Grandestino Tower Fitness Center, and that was a little weird because most fitness centers in Disney World do have a Smith machine. Anyway, Anyway, if relaxation and pampering is what you need, there are also spa services here too. These include a wide range of massages and facials for the ultimate R&R. Near La Vida Health Club is La Vida Salon. This salon offers haircuts, coloring, styling, and mani-pedis. You'll feel like a fresh new person when it's all said and done. La Vida Salon also offers a character couture service that'll give you one-of-a-kind makeover inspired by Disney characters. Now on to the great outdoor activities. I've talked a lot about Coronado Springs Massive Lake, but if you wanna see every angle of Lago Dorado, hit up the walking or jogging trail that snakes around the lake's perimeter. Speaking of snakes, avoid them, because they are in the lake. 
Now in the evenings, you can sit out by one of the campfires and enjoy a movie under the stars. These are a great free way to unwind after a long day of chasing down characters and lightning lanes. And if you're feeling inspired by all the amazing Spanish-inspired decor throughout your hotel, there are a couple of activities that actually let you get in on some of the action yourself. The Colors of Coronado Painting Experience is a master-led painting class that costs $35 per person. This class takes place once a week at Toledo, so check the schedule to see if the class will be happening during your stay. And at Barcelona Lounge, you can make your very own Spanish mosaic art shaped like Mickey Mouse in a fun workshop. This costs $25, plus you'll get a unique souvenir out of it. Now, hopefully my Sangria fans are still listening because if you really enjoyed the house-made drinks over at Three Bridges Bar and Grill, you can take a master class at Sangria University, also at Three Bridges. And it'll help you learn more about the mixology process while also getting a chance to make your own Sangria. Classes are $59 per person and you will need to make reservations on the Disney World website before your visit. Now for one of the best parts of Coronado Springs, the pools. The dig site is home to one of guests' favorite pools on all of Disney World property. This comes as no surprise because A, it's big, B, it's really committed to the theme, and C, it has an epic water slide. Alongside the lost city of Cibola Pool is a huge Mayan pyramid with a trickling waterfall and a 123-foot-long water slide wrapped around it featuring a spitting jaguar. Safe to say, this isn't your average hotel pool. Like the rest of Disney World, the dig site is also participating in the 50th anniversary festivities with themed activities like the Swimming of the Bowls daily pool party. Not to mention, the dig site also features the largest hot tub on Disney World property, which can fit up to 22 people. There are also three smaller leisure pools in each section of the hotel, in case you're just looking for a quiet, convenient spot to take a dip near your room. By the way, the one over at the Casitas does have lane markers too. Near the main pool, however, you'll also find a sand volleyball court, iguanas arcade, and a playground for the kids after they dry off. If you want to snag some Disney-fied souvenirs but aren't interested in carrying them back from the parks or Disney Springs, Panchito's Gifts and Sundries is located in El Centro for all your quick shopping needs. Now, bonus, staying at Disney's Coronado Springs will also give you access to early theme park entry for all four parks on every day of your visit. This means you can enter the parks 30 minutes before they officially open to the rest of the public, as long as you've got a park pass for that park. But before you start thinking this makes Coronado Springs super special or anything, it doesn't. It's a nice perk, sure, but it's also offered to all the other Disney-owned resorts. Though Coronado Springs has the tendency to feel like a deluxe resort, it does not have the extended evening hours benefit like the actual deluxe resorts have, which would allow you to stay in the parks on some days after they close to the rest of the public. So if that's a benefit you're wanting to use on your upcoming trip, you're better off spending the extra money to invest in an actual deluxe resort stay. All right, everyone, how does Coronado Springs stack up against other hotels on property? Is this really the hotel stay for you? Well, this is your resort if you're looking for deluxe amenities for a moderate price range. Compared to Disney World's other moderate resorts like Caribbean Beach and Port Orleans, there are a lot of perks available here that you can only find otherwise at deluxe resorts, aside from the extended evening hours and super close proximity to certain parks, of course. Club level access, spa services, and multiple table service restaurants are definitely not the norm at other mid-tier resorts, and that's why Coronado Springs is so deceiving. It's by far and away not your typical typical mid-tier stay. This is especially true if you opt for a room in the Grandestino Tower, which has a much more upscale and grandiose feel overall. Now, this could also be your hotel if you want a lot of food options within walking distance from your room. You've got several top-notch restaurants here with some options that might even compete with what you'd find over at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Disney's Yacht and Beach Club. Three Bridges Bar and Grill in Toledo offer super unique experiences, views, and food. And though it's nice to have these options within walking distance of your room, keep in mind that you don't need to actually stay at Coronado Springs to experience them. And maybe you want to spend a resort day where you've got a lot to do. You can spend an entire day at Coronado Springs and never be bored. You've got the grandiose pools, the unique dining, the arts and crafts projects, souvenir shopping, picturesque strolls around the lake, and family-friendly evening activities around the fire. Tons of fun all day long. Now, this is maybe not the right fit for you if you'd rather stay at a more intimate resort. Coronado Springs is big, like really big, so just getting around from your room to the main facilities might feel inconvenient if you're staying, for example, in the cabanas or the ranchos. If you don't opt for a preferred room that puts you closer to El Centro or you don't stay in Grandestino Tower, you could find yourself walking quite a ways each day to get to dining and shopping and other amenities. 
This is especially unpleasant after a long day of walking around the parks or when it's extremely hot or rainy outside, which let's face it is a lot of the time around these parts. And also maybe you want more complimentary travel options. The expansiveness of this hotel also contributes to transportation issues. Some Disney hotels are located on the monorail path or on the Skyliner route, and they have a much easier time getting you back to your room in a more timely fashion than if you just have to take buses all the time. But over at Coronado Springs, it's buses, buses, and more buses. Having four different stops adds a lot of unexpected wait time to your travel, especially if the bus is already full when it gets to your stop. If you've got beef with Disney buses, this is not the place for you. And maybe you plan on visiting Magic Kingdom the most. On a similar note, if you plan on spending multiple days over there, the distance getting to and from the park will be a big time suck. If you've got little ones in your party that'll need afternoon naps after a bustling morning of rides and meet and greets, then Coronado Springs isn't going to be the most convenient resort for you and your group. If you're looking for a moderate price stay that's closer to Magic Kingdom, the cabins at Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort could be a much better option for you since it's got a boat system that travels directly to and from Magic Kingdom. And don't forget, those cabins have a full kitchen, they have a master bedroom with bunk beds. There's a lot more space in there for a lot lower price. Overall, Disney's Coronado Springs Resort is misleading, but in a good way. You have the upscale rooms, the views, the amenities, the dining options, the club level. Grand Casino Tower basically feels like a deluxe resort for a much lower price tag. However, you will more than likely come across slow transportation issues and have to walk across a really spread out hotel on the daily. But ultimately, if you're looking for a deluxe stay on a budget, Disney's Coronado Springs Resort is your match made in heaven. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. Don't forget to watch our other hotel review videos as well. And of course, we appreciate your comments in the comments section if you've stayed at Coronado Springs or you're thinking of staying there. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.